corn is the symbol of a spirit that links the Americas in a common bond of union and solidarity. The exact ancestry of corn is a matter of doubt. Corn as we know it today could not have existed in the wild. Many scientists believe that it developed from teosinte, which has a tassel like corn, but unlike corn, the ears grow in clusters and are composed of a few kernels arranged end to end instead of growing on a cob. Others believe the ancestor of corn was a plant resembling modern gamma grass. This plant had several tassels which contained both male pollen and female seeds. The lower part of the tassel contained the female seeds, shown in red, and the upper part contained the male pollen, shown in yellow. In the course of evolution, the tassels at the top produced only male pollen. The tassels on the branches, only female seeds. These branches shortened, and their tassels were enclosed by husks. Later, the tassel developed into a crude ear. This early ancestor of corn grew on the sunny slopes of the high Cordilleras many centuries ago. Its glistening pods went unnoticed by the roving hunter, for he was intent only on his search for game. The Indian lived on what he could kill. To eat and sleep was all that he asked. As long as game was plentiful, he lived well. But there were times when game grew scarce. The search for food drove him far and wide. Wearied and hungry, he resorted to eating roots. But that was not enough. It was then that the waving tassels of grain drew his eye. He had now found a practical solution to his food problem. And so, through his discovery of corn, the civilization of the Americas began. With a crude clamshell hole, he dug the earth, planted his very best kernels. An offering to the corn gods was made to ensure an abundant crop. At every harvest, he selected his finest ears for seed and blessed them in the sacred waters of salt which he believed improved its growth. Because corn was so vital to his existence, he erected great temples to the corn gods. The civilization of the Mayas was built around the growth and worship of corn. Yumkash was the green god, patron of growing corn. An amazing calendar was developed by the Maya to chart his planting and harvesting. To the gods who held the four corners of the earth, this symbol for planting was dedicated. The Maya planted four grains to the hill, and today many farmers still plant four seeds to the hill. One for the blackbird, one for the crow, one for the cutworm, and one to grow. A few centuries later, the Aztecs rose to power. Their great civilization, too, was built on corn. Sinteotl was their corn goddess. Huatlique was Mother Earth. Human lives were sacrificed to her that their blood might increase her fertility. In the Andes existed one of the greatest civilizations of the ages, the Incas. They farmed in terraces far up the steep mountainsides. They worshipped the sun god on whose bounty they depended for their precious corn. They developed corn with giant kernels, three times regular size. Corn migrated into the Argentine, Brazil, across the Rio Grande, far north into Canada. Corn was carried to Europe by the conquistadores, to North Africa by the Barbary pirates. Corn is grown along the Danube, the Nile, in South Africa, India, China a vital force in the economic life of the world. Corn is our heritage from the Indian. From its golden kernels, we make tortillas, enchiladas, tamales. 
He gave us corn bread, hominy, succotash, corn mush, forerunners of cornflakes. He taught us the joys of eating popcorn and roasting ears. From the Indian, we learned to ferment corn. The skill and patience of this early ancestor created a new civilization. To him, we owe much. Today, we plow a dozen furrows at a time, plant many acres in a day, pick and husk by machine. We do in 15 hours what the early Maya required 500 to do. Much has been learned about corn, the most important of which is inbreeding. Now, to accomplish this, a paper sack is slipped over the tassel. Then transparent bags are placed over the ear shoots before the silks emerge to prevent pollinization from other plants. When the silks are out and the tassel is shedding, pollen is released into the sack covering the tassel. Now the bag is removed from the ear shoot and the sack containing pollen is slipped over the ear. In this way, the silks are fertilized with pollen from the same plant. This is known as inbreeding. After each generation of inbreeding, the resulting seeds produce smaller corn until a pure strain is reached and sizes remain fixed. This may seem odd to deliberately produce smaller plants, but just wait and we'll see what happens when two unrelated inbred strains are joined in wedlock. My, my, what a child. Stronger stalks and increased yield, making better seed corn for bigger crops. Of the total production of corn in the United States, 75% goes for feeding livestock, cattle, sheep, horses, mules, and hogs. More hogs make more little pigs, and more pigs make more little sausages, and vice versa. Corn increases the cream content, builds up little calves. Surplus corn fattens the feeder from the range more economically than any other crop, converting him into choicest beef. And they love it, too. Just watch. Yes, sir, corn has what it takes. And now comes the chemist who has discovered and developed many products from corn. The kernel consists of two main parts, the endosperm and the germ from which oil is extracted, furnishing salad oil for your table, cooking oil for your kitchen. From the endosperm, the chief product obtained is starch, starch used in making ice cream, pudding, Pies like mother used to make. And starch that stiffens your shirt. Starch makes sizing for textile. Paste for the bill poster. And mucilage for postage stamps. From starch comes glucose, rich golden syrup for cornbread, griddle cakes, jams, preserves. In surgery, glucose replaces sugars lost from the blood. Starch makes sugar, the sweet tooth of the corn. Quick energy as candy. It's the body and flavor of your soft drink, the boost in your beer. Corn sugar is one of nature's most easily assimilated foods. Doctors prescribe it, babies cry for it. As science scans the glass of the future, it sees new vital uses for corn. Alcohols for power fuels, high explosives, tires from corn. Fabric for parachutes, better than silk. Plastics, tougher than steel. Or cars, or tanks, men of war, and ships of peace. Farm machines, and streamlined trains, and buildings of the future of plastic. Monuments to corn. It's a far cry from those primitive days when the waving grain attracted the roving hunter. Little did he realize the store of riches they contained. The botanists called it Zayamaze, 
that which sustains the Mayas. How much more truly might we say today, that which sustains the world.